Dinky do to you, mate. See you, mate. I'll give you a bell in the future. Look forward to it. Bye See you, Darren. Ta da now. Right, Peter from Crew. Are you there, Peter? Hello. Hello, mate. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Oh, you've given some excellent advice this evening. I don't know about that. Oh, day by day. The proof of the puddings in the eating? Yeah. What I'm thinking about is to be so. Did you like that? The proof of the pudding? The pudding. The pudding. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Your day by day is brilliant, brilliant typology. And taboo subjects. Yes. Unresolved issues. Yes. Social conditioning. Yes. And sacrifice. Yes. Very interesting. Very interesting. Very interesting. I'd like to sort of try and create a little bit of academic feedback from this. That's what we want. <coughs> we always have our best academics from the top universities on this programme. Oh, good. I hope you do. So you'll fit in a treat. <laughs> yeah, I doubt it. Um, right. This is what we call mass debate, you know. Sorry? This is what we call mass debate. <laughs> yeah, mass debate, yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Um, right. How do you feel about cultural globalisation under a matrix organisational structure? Well, I haven't That's actually so done that since I went round to the chip shop for a bag of chips. Yeah. Okay. But go on, say it again. Cultural right. globalisation. Under a matrix organisational structure. Yes. As a social conditioning factor. Yes, I think it's vital. Right. Do you? Yes. Do you really? Yes, because if you're talking about um, a social organisational structure, yes. right, you're talking about what may or may not come to pass in the very near future. Well, or may or may not be at this moment in time. You know, may or may not be. I mean, we may well have it, but for instance, um, you know, cultural globalisation. Yeah. I think it's creeping in. Well, as to a matrix organisation under a country, uh, under that sort of... Are you talking like something like UNESCO? Well, what I'm talking about is people as ultimate byproducts. Do you know UNESCO? No, I don't know UNESCO. Un UNESCO is the United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organisation. Oh, right. You see, so that covers most of your cultural globalisation, actually, under a matrix organisation. Right. So, do we know what type of cultures we're actually talking about? Now, what sort of cultures do you want? Um, well, we've got people cultures, haven't we, really? You know, we, there's lots of people, so we've got all these people cultures. Mm. So, it, ultimately, on, if we wanted to sort of monopolise on people, what we'd have to do is to create a byproduct and people would actually become that byproduct. Right. And that's where you, you've got your social conditioning, which is what you referred to earlier. Absolutely. In your chapter. And then we talk about um, sacrifice, taboo subjects, and unresolved issues. Well, unresolved issues fits very much into my category of um, cultural globalisation. Yes. Are, are you so you think we can't actually culturally globalise until we've sorted out our unresolved issues? Well, yes, definitely. But I think... You think they're actually... Pre they're, they're preventing our cultural globalisation? I don't think we do need to culturally globalise. But I no, no, it's not a question of needing to. It's a question of, are we doing so? I think that... I mean, we don't need... To go into Europe, yeah, we but, don't need yeah, to have politics. Yes, I agree. We don't need yes. to have the church. Yeah. We don't need to have underage mothers. Yes, I agree that we've got that. We've got that emphasis. But that's what we've got. We've got politics. We've got the church. We've got Europe. We've got, and this is all supposed to be progress. Well, it's not what, progress. What, what they don't realise is that there's always been a constant movement of world population. Anyway, for instance, you and I, if you trace our ancestry back far enough, originated in the African Rift Valley. Well, I mean, that's genetics and mimetics, really, isn't it? Yes. I mean, uh, on the note of mimetics, that's where social conditioning... Um, comes to pass over recent years. But social conditioning has gone on since the creation of humanity. No, but that's only from a genetic point of view. No, 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 that's from a mimetic point of view. No, if you look back, if you look back, all species have some form of social conditioning, even if it's a couple of clams lying at the yes, bottom of yes, the sea. Yes. They're that's, there that's because where, if one clam has said to the other, would you like to live with me at the yes. bottom of the sea? Okay, okay, that's where we come back to 
to the sort of non-sacrificial um, argument that you had earlier and unresolved issues and taboo subjects. Now, when you, say, when you say non-sacrificial, when you say non-sacrificial, do you mean uh, self-sacrifice? Yes. Right. Right. So you don't mean sacrifice of other people, you mean no, self-sacrifice. No, self-sacrifice, as, right. as in, yes, okay, I'll allow you to make your mistakes, typology. Yes. Type of thing. But social conditioning will always continue to be because of our genetic code. Well, social conditioning and, always has been. And... And even if you change no, the genetic no, coding, you would no, still no, have social no, conditioning. No, 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 because it, beyond, you've, the, you've always had social that, conditioning. That's why, that's why the monkeys groom each other. Yeah, I understand that. Pick ticks and things like that. And eat I, I understand that. And beyond that... Sorry if somebody's having an early plate of wheat bangs. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but beyond that, we've got We've got marketing, and we've got we've got social conditioning where we have um, where academics have got choices between what is acceptable and what is not acceptable, and not just from a, a, a sort of ideology, but from a, a, a very strategic point of view. But we've always under, had under, we've under always had headline, marketing. Yeah, but under the headline of social conditioning, uh, an you see what, what I'm, a, po a point you're missing here is nothing in the world happens, right? And this is okay. this this is what comes out of capital. This is, Cap this this is, is comes out of capitalism, okay. right? This just is, listen a second. Just listen a second. Nothing in the world happens unless somebody sells something now right. that has gone yeah. on okay. since the 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 the, the evolution of yeah. the species yeah i i totally agree with what you're saying but what i do disagree with is do people really need to buy certain things from a marketing point of view if we want to go down that avenue do they really need to buy a certain brand of lager do they really need to have these things? And what are they actually? If you if you actually looked at it from, um, I think okay. I think okay, if, you, much, if you were you know. to take if you were to take say television advertising, yeah, and yeah. you were to run through an average commercial break. This is yeah. television advertising, yeah. not radio, right? And you were to run through a commercial break of say three minutes forty seconds or something like that. Mm -hmm. Right in the middle of one of the major soap operas, you would probably find that the bulk of the things being advertised, right, yep. are chemical preparations that are unnecessary to add to Absolutely. the human body. Absolutely, yep. So yep. I would I would back you up from that point of view, but yep. you try telling somebody who uh, suffers from BO that right. they don't need their roll-on, mm. you try telling them that. So when you say, do we actually need... You know, there is okay. need, and there is need. If you're in hottest right. Africa, then your greatest priority, right in the middle of the bush, where there is water. no clean water, yep. you know, no yep. clean water, no food, is not necessarily a roll-in deodorant. Yep. Okay. A roll-on deodorant, yep. even. Okay, right. Rather than rolling it in. Yeah, so... Rubbing I mean, it in. Yeah. Don't try that at home now. Right, okay. So, I mean, really, I mean, like... How many people get up in the morning at 8 o'clock and have to be at work and such like, and they drive their cars and they spew millions of tonnes of carbon monoxides and various other toxins? Yes. And what is the percentage ratio of their actual wages at the end of the day? Uh, and, and well, if you, if you balance it out, if you, balance, if you were to take an average yeah, wage no. and an average lifestyle and an yeah. average house, you'll find that there's virtually nothing left at the end because all the marketing uh, wallers are off with it. So what you're saying is that we have perfect zero gravity proportional ratio. No, no, that's not what our, I'm. No, that's what you're our saying. Within our organisational structure. Within our within our organ within our cultural organisational. Within our matrix, matrix organizational structure, structure. Yeah. Okay. yes, yeah. then we yeah. are approaching, we're we're approaching a capital balance. Yes, no we're not. We, we're either becoming a, a zero gravity project or a byproduct. Well, it depends so, what language so, you're talking about. Are you talking, uh, say, for instance, in actuarial language? Are you talking in socioeconomic language? Are you talking in statistical language? Statistical globalised cultural language. 
So you're talking statistical language, and bordering on the actuarial language. Yes, in, in, in memetic as well. You're dealing in memetics. Yes. Because that is what you're interested in. Yes. Because it all depends where you're coming from, because I could tell you that the marketing man from a leading soap powder company yeah. would have a difference of opinion with you. Yeah, but that's only... Are you smoking? That's only for... Are you smoking? No. No, tell the truth. Yes. You are. This is a no-smoking program, and well, you know it. Scotty McClue's Late Night Phone-In. Have you phoned yet? Stinky-doo! 